My name is Brida Wool, and I play Lou Linklater. And it's so, nice that you didn't get killed off at the end of season one, which is always nice. What happens to her in season two? What can we tease? Oh. Wait, before we talk about that, let me say how happy I am that I wasn't killed off. <laughs> <laughs> because it is stressful when you're on a show where at any moment you get a script and they're, they're like, they're like, they're beating you to death with a hammer and yeah. puncturing out your eyeballs 28 days later. So. But, um, no, I didn't die. Very glad to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> um, season two um, deals with the aftermath of being stabbed by your friend who I worked with for about three years longer who was a secret serial killer and looked out for me and we were friends and we had a similar upbringing and a similar lifestyle and where I thought he was my guy I thought he was my friend and he killed a bunch of people and then stabbed me in the stomach and and season two starts with me reckoning with that. So, so do you think Lou would be happy if he wakes up? Or uh, is she happy having him... You know what? I up? attempted as, as an actor to even attempt to battle the notion of closure after a violent act. And I think that that is something that is so complicated and individualistic to everybody who's been through something like that to seek closure. And I don't know if I necessarily um, necessarily get that closure or when you, you know, I think everybody has an idea of what should happen, you know, like if you have somebody come and take away all your power, do you go and confront them? Do you, I mean, what do you do when somebody assaults you and violently tries to kill you? Afterwards, there's a process and everyone's process is different. It's like grieving. Except the grief is for your own like power and your own autonomy. And it, sometimes it's found by having Brady wake up and I confront him and tell him and what a what he did to me, you know. And I, you know, I'm sure if anyone's ever been through anything like that, you fantasize constantly, and it can keep you up at night. And there's PTSD, and there's like a tremendous amount of um, dealing when somebody comes and removes, takes your power. And so that's part of my story in season two. Is there someone who really helps her through this? Does she have a new best friend or somebody she can lean on? Uh, there's some people. There's some people <laughs> in my life in season two, but um, I think one of the things about having your identity be uh, ripped away from you <laughs> uh, is that uh, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to trust people after... Uh, I mean, if I if you think about it, like Brady, you know, taught me to that my instincts are all wrong. Mm -hmm. So how in the hell do you? I mean, this is what happens with any sort of um, cheating, like or, or any sort of betrayal. Like they might. I've been shown that all of my instincts are wrong, which is like... Yeah. So enjoy yourself! I mean, I, it, it, seems, it seems very dark, but I hope that I said something about it, you know, that, that I can say something about it, and that I can reflect that back to somebody else who's going through that, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I'm in the story in season two, if I'm the best example of what I should do in the case, but um, maybe you don't always need good good examples on TV. You just need to watch somebody else going through some shit to get What's some. the easy uh, transitions from your role from Unreal to uh, Mr. Mercedes? Um... I don't know. I don't know if anything's ever easy. <laughs> I don't know if anything's ever easy. I feel like, um, I don't know. I, they're both really, both, both stories are really exciting and really cool. I think my experience with, and I had a really supportive, creative process on Unreal as well, and, um, you know, Sarah Shapiro, and, and I just went back on C 
season four and worked with Kelsey Summer, who directed the episode that I was in, and to see her go from the one of the lead actors on the show to directing the, some of the series was like so satisfying. Maybe we'll see that on this show too. Just kidding. I mean, not kidding at all. Um, but some, I mean, that would be cool. But um, I was excited to do a new project for sure. I was excited, and I was excited to do season two of this project. Of this as well. And it was weird going back to Unreal, like, God damn, like for three years later or something, going back up to Vancouver, and it was like same but totally different. And it was neat though. It was really neat. Yeah, but this is. Um, I think each time you do a job, you learn. So. I think Unreal prepared me for this, and this role will prepare me for another role. And each one is like a learning process on how to be like better at handling on the job stress, <laughs> better at um, remaining a professional, <laughs> better at um, being truthful to the story, without um, making it about you, you know, or becoming a you know, it's a art that is, I'm the subject. I'm the, it's like, it's not like a painter where I like paint and then give painting away. It's like my body, my face, my voice, and it can become narcissistic. And so you battle like it not being about you. It's about like the story in Unreal. And it's about the, and working with people like Brendan Gleeson. You know, it's never, there's not a lot of like ego flowing around that, that minute. You, you tell a story and you tell it well. You know, and that's all you got. That's the only game in town, basically. <laughs> so going into season two with everything that your character has been through, how was that different for you personally as an actor versus going into season two? Because you've been through a lot now. Was it a lot different mindset for you? Um. It felt pretty good. I had a lot of moments in this season in Charleston where I was like, this is, this rules. <laughs> like, this is the coolest fucking job on the planet. I mean, there, you know, you, I guess you get a stride, right? Where it's like, I think in any job, I think in any job it's like, you try to measure your amounts of stress and happiness and gratitude and all that shit, you know? And then you like, hope that there's enough there for you to go. I put my, I put my, did my best, I put my two cents in, like, and I'm proud of what I did. I think everybody seeks that, so I had a, I, maybe I've just become an adult enough <laughs> to recognize that when it's happening, as opposed to being like, oh, I'm worried about this, or worried about that, or like, and this team is, wants to make something good and cool. And so it's really fun to be with a group of people that want to make something good and cool. And I hope that like people feel that and share it. And I can't wait to share it. I think it's going to be awesome. I know we know um, that the story revolves around, uh, one part of the story revolves around the DA trying to wake up Brady so he can atone for his crimes. Um, does your character, having been a victim of him, play some sort of role into that? I want to know, I'm, that's a great question, because from where I'm standing, like if you were taught interviewing you, the answer would be, what fucking justice is that? Justice is for rich people. <laughs> 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 I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs>